and welcome to another Snap Crackle Pop episode of <laughs> We Only Look Thin. I am Catherine Weigel. I am one of your Cracker Jack hosts. Yeah. Catherine Weigel. I am a Tiny Habit Certified Coach, a Thrive Global Certified Coach. Wow. I have lost over 100 pounds, kept it, kept it off for over six years. Yeah. I am one of the hosts of this podcast. I'm excited it's summer, and with me today is... Donald Weigel, and I am also one of the hosts of this podcast. I have lost uh, uh, over about 100 pounds, about, about <laughs> over, <laughs> under, beyond, uh, and uh, I've kept it off for about five and a half years, and uh, we are here to talk about it and how it fits into the summer. Yay! And, and how sna- uh, Snap, Crackle, and Pop fit into Cracker Jacks. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> I was just thinking of, like, firecrackers and, like, it's summer and the 4th of July. Like, yeah. I don't know if you have a 4th of July in your country, uh, but here... We have a Fourth of July. Yes, in our it is country. American Independence Day. It is, and uh, it also is another thing. What? Uh, if you're listening to this after July second, uh-huh. uh, which you should be, because it won't come out until <laughs> after then. <laughs> if you're listening to this, you've if you're hacked, li- and if cracked. you're listening to this episode, and I suspect that you are right now. <laughs> I don't know how I know that you're listening to it, but I know you are. Uh, Twenty twenty three. Yeah. Is over half over. Over half over. What if what if it's over under, half over? <laughs> under half over. Under half over. No, under it's half. over half over. It is it is more than half over. Or it has ju- it's just the beginning of right now. Is, if you look at it is a different way. Twenty twenty three half full or half empty. Hmm. You I have think to it, ask yourself. You know, I uh I don't actually even remember the last time we recorded a podcast. So whatever we're going to say next, I am looking forward to being inspired by it. Well, we wanted to call this episode Fork of July. Because, because come it's on. But, come on, everybody. And also last episode we talked a lot about forks, about salad forks and oh, how, we did? and how I didn't realize Oh, I haven't listened to that one. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about uh, kind of the middle of the year, which is really weird. Um, and the good news is Donald and I are our own best friends. It's no, true. I was going to say best, uh, not guinea pigs or like test, test te- subjects. Test our, subjects. Our own, yeah. Yeah, we're our own best because I, it's the middle of the year for me. Guess what? I basically weigh the same thing I weighed January 1st, which was not planned. Um, yeah. And right under our very noses, people, Donald Weigel has lost weight this year. Yeah. Right? He, the way he described it was like, oh, I'm up, down, I'm over one, I'm down one, up one. And it was like a game of, I was going to say, tr- not Trivial Pursuit, like uh, Battleship, yeah. where he's like just yeah. giving me coordinates, but never saying <laughs> how, much, how much he actually lost. Before and then, yeah, hit. hit, you sunk my battle, Battleship. my U-boat, yeah. Um, He's lost like over ten pounds this year, right under our very yeah, noses. Well, look the the bad the bad news is okay. that uh, mm-hmm. that okay. from about the middle of July oh, boy. through the end of last year, I very slowly uh, gained. Uh, I I went to the top of my my weight range. So twenty twenty two. Yeah, and then went beyond it. <laughs> okay. And I I sort of early in the year got on the scale and said to myself, this uh, this is not sustainable to continue <laughs> having this, a podcast. <laughs> this, yeah, having a podcast, call, t- saying that I look thin if I'm going to continue uh, gaining weight. So yeah, I've I've lost actually about fourteen pounds uh, in uh, twenty twenty three. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'm, again, the I'm way- I'm not thrilled that I gained it in the first place. Oh my gosh, back, take the win, my but guy. But I'm very happy that it has come back off. Yeah. And I, I gained weight last year and didn't lose it. So I'm still working on getting it off. Uh, but this is a great opportunity at the middle of the year so to, to represent both sides of this a uh, heavy-ended coin where yeah. I'm I'm tails and he's the head. Look, I spent I spent many years as as many as, you know, adding up to decades, I would I would, you know, gather up all of my resolve at the end of a year and we talk about this a lot because I think it is a it is a big deal amongst people, amongst humans. <laughs> Um, that January 1st, you make these New Year's resolutions and you you say to yourself, okay, in 2023, I'm going to lose X amount of weight. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And then I would get 
maybe even just a couple of weeks in and I wouldn't make any progress and I would give up and I would think about it and whatever. But, you know, I would get to this time of year, you know, we're at the halfway mark of the year and I would say to myself, well, I really haven't gotten it together so far. So I may as well just give up and wait till next year or, yeah. or, you know, like, boy, I really like, I'm just not in a place where I can, I can think about this and get it together. I'll just, I'll start thinking about it in 2024, but 2024 will be different. And then I would do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And I think that we as humans uh, look to humans look to, you know, sort of special dates on yeah. a calendar to be special. And we're here to tell you that you don't need a special date on a calendar. But if you do happen to need one. I need I need special dates. Then if you're looking for a milestone on the calendar, July has a lot of them. But like if you don't celebrate July 4th, is that a if thing? If you don't celebrate July 4th, there's, there's lots of other milestones hmm. that you can look at. Prove it. July 3rd uh-huh. is Compliment Your Mirror Day. So... <laughs> Hello, mirror. <laughs> You're doing a fine job reflecting my If you don't my, actually do that visage. on Monday, <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Yeah. Who's the raddest of them all? Yeah. You, it turns out you are mirror. I'm complimenting Aww. you, the Aww. mirror. Okay. July 3rd. July 6th uh-huh. is World Kissing Day. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And that, like, you can burn a lot of calories uh, Hello. By, uh, by doing some- Does it count if you just wrap your arms around your own waist and, like, pretend to kiss the air? Yeah, you might You might even combine the two and kiss yourself in the mirror. Oh, oh okay. Then, like, like I did in- Show, show yourself some in love. In high school. Show yourself right? some love. Okay. July 10th is Teddy Bear's Picnic Day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, okay. if, you, if you need- Okay. If you need something- like, July 17th is World Emoji Day. Okay. So that you can you can send yourself. Wait, what date is that? Uh, July uh, July seventeenth is July World 17th. Emoji Day. So you can like send yourself some uh, some hearts and some Aww. you know some smiley emojis Fun. and and then start like really like kick your fitness and health journey into high gear. Then fun fact: when I am posting an emoji. Your smiley faces, your sad frowns, your your star-crossed lover uh, eyeballs. I actually try to make that face when I'm looking for the em- emoji. Like yeah, the no, she really does. Whatever. Like if I, I've seen her like actually like, like grimace, grimace uh, while she's doing. And I'm like, are you? I'm like, to- you're sending an emoji right now. See, aren't I want to make it real for people. Yeah. Okay, so we're on to the 17th of July. There and can't be any the more next dates. day. The yeah. next day, July 18th, is stick out your tongue day. Which could be the day, like, Ooh, you could get... There's a day for everything. You could burn a lot of calories sticking out your tongue and oh, things. Oh, wow. Um, Catch and, snowflakes. And you could, you could also send that, like, do that, like, sticking out your tongue emoji on that day. Uh, and keep keep the holiday yeah, of I'm the not world a, like, emoji eh, day in your okay. heart. July 24th is Cousins Day. Oh, I've got some cousins. Yeah. I skipped a lot of them because oh, a lot did? of them are food-based, <laughs> oh, okay. actually. Like, there's there's one almost every day. And then July 31st, uh-huh. end of the month, okay. is Uncommon Musical Instrument Day. Wow. What What would be better than pulling out your contrabass clarinet or your alp horn? <laughs> Oh my god! And then hitting my alp horn, your alp horn, and with then, my skills, and then hitting your health and fitness journey hard. Wow! Hard. Like you get that alp horn out and you like celebrate unusual. Wow! And then uncommon my, musical instruments. My day. stomach would be flat. And then exactly. See, <laughs> I don't get a laugh for that, and you throw out. The, what what was the musical instrument? The contrabass clarinet or the alphorn. <laughs> do you know what either of those? I know what an alphorn is, but a contrabass contraba- contraba- clarinet is is a is a big. It's like a it's a very deep sounding clarinet. It's it's sort of a like a deep sounding. similar to a bass saxophone, but it's huh. actually a it's more of a clar in the clarinet. Wow. Family. Yeah. Um. So any of those days, <laughs> any of those days. The point here really is that. You don't need January 1st. Every day you, is a special day. You don't need to, to like turn over to a new year to do this. You can really start right now. Yeah. Because the best time to have started would have been January 1st, 2023. But the second best time to start is right now. It like, is right now. And right now is when we're going to start actually giving you the hot tips and tricks 
of the season. This is a mid-year blowout. It is. Uh, and, it's and like look, tell yourself, remind yourself that the year is half over, but we have half of the year left in order to make choices that you're proud of. It, like you've got six more months of 2023 in which to make choices that you are proud of. Like uh, think about all of the opportunities that you have to make those choices and to make it happen. And here's the thing though, when we start out in January, we can think to ourselves in six months, I'll have lost this much weight and it'll be great. And then I'll be at my goal. But now it's now and you're listening to this and maybe that hasn't happened. Yeah. So for the first part of the second part of this episode, there's three parts, <laughs> yeah. three parts. The first was the funny. And then this part is going to be uh, directly talking to people who are maybe struggling, haven't had the year that they thought they were going to have. Maybe you're a new listener and you're just uh, trying to figure out what this podcast is about uh, and uh, and get some big picture kind of macro view of how to start back looking at healthy habits for the season. Yeah, you sound like me getting on the scale. You had mentioned it earlier, like me giving you coordinates because I'll be like, well, I'm I'm like up a pound from two weeks ago, but oh my that's, gosh, still, that math is but that's still down a pound from three <laughs> weeks ago. And so it's sort of a net that neutral. That sounds like somebody who is trying to avoid like, okay, tell me what the bottom line is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I'm going to paint you a picture. Exactly. So the first part of uh, is going to sort of talk about the big picture of just getting some things back on track um, using some principles, including the letter P. Um, I don't know what letter of the alphabet that is, like yeah. how far it goes. If you know, let us know, listener. Uh, if, if you talk for a second, I'll count and figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. We could also ask the G-man over there, the uh, Oogle... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, so the- It's uh, 16th. 16th. Okay. Yeah. We're going to lean heavily on the 16th letter of the alphabet by giving you a bunch of Ps to look at. So that's that. The next part, after we get go over the basics, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into maybe the people like Donald, Donald and his funky bunch, who maybe <laughs> are doing are losing much weight already this year and are feeling pretty good about it. But uh-oh- it's summer, y'all, and maybe there's some stumbling blocks that we might not consider, given it is summertime. I'm making like a hang loose yeah. kind of like no, that's we, Donald's vibe. I've got some clear stumbling blocks uh, ahead that I have to that I have to navigate. Yeah. Also. So, uh, so the first part again, the the simple basics. The second part is you're a rad guy. Yeah. Uh, and and you're just ready to kind of level up for the summer, but maybe uh, give you some tips and tricks there. But either way, you know, we've got a framework and we sort of introduced this framework fairly recently when talking about um, we did an episode called I'm a Carby Girl, uh, which was about <laughs> say it again. <laughs> I'm a Carby Girl, <laughs> which was about um, working all sorts of foods into your diet plan, because, you know, I I did Atkins a bunch of times, uh, keto. And, you know, I, I sort of still have this lingering notion of like, like bread is bad, pasta is bad. And I think a lot of people are like that, but you really can work, you know, virtually any food into your diet if you, uh, if you follow certain steps. And we came up with uh, a bunch of uh, words that begin with the letter P, the 16th letter of the alphabet, yes, which thank we knew, you. Which, which we I'll never forget. Knew off the top of never our heads. Never forget. Yeah. And, um, and, and you, you know, we're going to adapt that framework because I think it's, it's, you know, if you, we are people with growth mindsets and we are problem solvers. And if you have these tools in your toolbox, you can approach any health and fitness problem or really any problem and, and use this and get over it and figure it out. Yeah, because I think a lot of times we see specific problems and we might give suggestions for it. Like, well, how do I work carbs into my life? So we give you all of these P letters. <laughs> P letters. Do we give you is P P letters? Is that a thing? Is like P an letters, alphabet? Yeah, P soup? words. Yeah. yeah, P words. Um, to work on a particular problem, but really it's universal. And if you have a, a virtual toolbox full of letters, uh, these particular P's can be used in many different circumstances. So um, should I give a summary of what the P's are? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So there's uh, pause, prioritize, plan, pair, pump up the volume, portion, 
policy and pivot. I don't know how many that is. That might be eight different P's. I'm not sure. But we're going to use that structure again. Donald will copy the the episode in the show notes if you want to go back and listen to Carby Girl in particular. But for those of you who are just sort of starting out in or like trying to regroup after a busy season, um, we are going to take some of these peas and help you decide how to approach this summer, the next few weeks. We can't say, okay, well, I'm definitely going to lose another 10 pounds by December. That'll be great. That isn't realistic. We can't, you know, micro plan six months ahead. But what we can do is look at the next, I don't know, Eight weeks. Yeah. See what happens. And, and, you know, as I mentioned, you might be inclined to look at the calendar and do another P, which is panic because (laughs) the year is half over and you're saying to yourself, "I, I haven't really even started or maybe I've even gained weight. And, you know, what do I do? Well, the first P is to pause. Yeah. Like, where are you? How has the year gone? Where do you want to go for the rest of it? And really like pause and look at the season ahead. Yeah. And also giving yourself some grace and forgiving yourself for maybe not being where you want to be is really important because working on any of your health goals from a place of shame or guilt doesn't help us. Nobody is booing people along a marathon route. We don't necessarily have to be like, yay, hooray, I overate like 400 days. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I sure did gain five pounds. That was amazing. But we can just show ourselves some grace and start sort of clean and <laughs> clean and fresh. Yeah. It sounded but, like a I deodorant f- commercial. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, is some We can use that too. But I, I forget where we got this from initially. But, you know, talk to yourself the same way that you would want to talk to a loved one who was being hard on themselves or that the same way that you would want to talk to a loved one to encourage them to to show themselves grace and kindness and to realize that that they can turn this around. Yeah. So once you've paused and just sort of taken a breath from from panicking, um, then we get to actually get into the part of planning because it's not enough to have a goal in mind, but actually to look at your real life as it's happening and figure out what you can actually expect of yourself in a particular season. So again, planning goes into literally opening up your calendar app or whatever paper calendar you have and really looking at the next couple of weeks, month, uh, two months, and really seeing what you have coming up. We have a family trip planned. I have a sibling who's getting married. We've got summer school things going on, birthdays, lots of different things. And so for me, looking at that, not just saying like, oh, well, this is the summer, the sweat summer, or the, the hot booty summer, or right. whatever. It's like, oh, I have a lot of things going on. And out of the next 60 days, we'll be traveling for 20. I'm just throwing that out there. Is this really a time for me to lose weight or is this a time for me to really look and go, gosh, maintaining my weight right now would be a success for me. Last summer, we had some plans and guess what? COVID happened in our family and we were totally displaced and plans were changed and ruined. And it didn't mean like the end of the world, but I was up on the scale five pounds by the end of the summer just because our plans did change. Plans are not promises. They're just a structure to go from. But really look at what you know about your summer right now and ask yourself what you are willing to actually give to your health efforts. Yeah. And I I mentioned that there were some um, hurdles coming up and Catherine just said, you know, we have the we have a wedding to go to and then we have a family trip and I am looking forward to that family trip more than about anything, but those those are also opportunities in which to overindulge on food repeatedly, food and drink repeatedly like for in a very short amount of time. And so I I see that those are coming up and I have to really, you know, I really have to plan on how I'm going to approach those things. Yeah, and part of that too, and if you are just starting out with your health goals again, you might think to yourself, oh gosh, well, why bother? Things are always going to be busy. I'll just start again in the fall. And this, to look at the summer ahead, isn't about being defeated, but it is about deciding what we can Number the number three of the P, which is the 16th letter of the alphabet, <laughs> is prioritize. 
based on your bandwidth right now, based on how much you have going on, what can you prioritize in the time that you do have? Yeah, like maybe you you can just pick one small habit and focus on that. Pick something to add to your lifestyle. Maybe you're going to say to yourself, well, I can't do my ideal exercise or I put in air quotes real exercise, but maybe you can keep up with your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is all of the calories you burn just by being a living, breathing human. (laughs) And you can up those by making sure that you get extra movement or go out of your way to take the stairs and Instead of an elevator, you know, it take the long way when you're walking someplace, you know, make multiple trips, like things like that. Maybe, you know, you're just going to add a five minute walk before lunch. You know, maybe you're going to say to yourself, I'm not going to have opportunities to meal prep. So my priority will be buying pre-made things that are on my plan or, you know, making things that are, uh, you know, from from chopped items that are already available at the grocery store or maybe frozen. Maybe you're going to make those things a priority. Exactly. And also, too, if you have realized and again, if you're just starting out, you you realize that looking at your canary habits, which we did an episode called Canary in a Coal Mine, where we talked about sort of those telltale signs that things are falling apart. Are are you finding yourself eating directly out of bags of things, yeah. sharing things while you're you're seated, eating off other people's plates, buying family size portion for the value of it? Right. So maybe if portions are being tough for you right now, maybe this is the summer where you look at portion control and tell yourself, I'm only going to eat food sitting down. I'm not going to stand at the counter. I'm not going to eat off of our daughter's plate. That's one of my policies. I'm going to eat single servings and not in bulk. What can you do to start pulling back those negative habits that aren't serving you and really take some control over your portion sizes? Yeah. And, you know, maybe you're going to, you know, really lean into those summer vegetables and um, and add them to things. And uh, in doing so, Pump, pump up, up the, the volume. volume. I could tell Donald was looking at me. He was like, I- I- I'm about to say vegetables and we're going to pump up the volume. Pump up the volume this summer, everybody. It's nature's bounty. You've got your watermelons. Donald is a big fan of the raspberry. Raspberries right now, as we're recording this, are so hot right now. They're so hot right now. (laughs) They are amazing, at least here in Southern California, um, probably where you are too. Right. So still have food that you like, but maybe just pump up the volume. We're not saying replace everything with cauliflower, rice, and cry. Uh, Use use your tears as a salad dressing. We're not saying that, but pump up the volume, add veggies to things that you already enjoy, uh, and watch watch those portion controls because like in the summer you could just see watermelon did you know that like half of a watermelon is like 200 calories it's like five pounds of food i'm i'm generalizing is ridiculously it's ridiculous. low calories it, it almost feels like it should be illegal <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna arrest it but they can't because the you know what the handcuffs aren't like they're so round the handcuffs can't go around they it. can't so, fit around no. a watermelon so they can't be yeah, arrested they no. will not be contained but we also have uh well watermelon jail <laughs> i don't know yeah. gallagher's in there with his oh my god he's just taking a mallet why was that so funny kids if you don't know who gallagher is don't google it because the 80s gallagher were, and like his we didn't twin have brother else. gallagher too like was like the, also a thing yeah bananas uh but uh, if you are in a colder climate right now, we have Wolt members, we only look thin place members, who are actually in Australia where it is uh, the bitter winter right now. Perhaps this is a time to pump up the volume with root vegetables ah, and vegetables. hearty soups and teas and the like. Uh, just really pump up that uh, that comfort with some warm vegetables there. I said vegetables one more time. Uh, let's see. And also pear. Pear is the last one that we will be talking about. Um, is if you do have seasonal indulgences that you really want to make sure you don't be like, well, it's summertime and now everything's delicious and I can't even go and have anything. If you love funnel cake, if you love soft serve ice cream, maybe don't have it every day, maybe pair 
a special event with having something special. Have the thing that you really care about with friends on a Friday. Prioritize it on the weekends. Don't have it every single day. There are so many ways that you can cut back, but still enjoy foods that you enjoy without making you feel like you're living in a cruel summer. Well, eh, oh, cruel summer. That was such a good song. It was. Um, And I know that you said that uh, Pear was the last one, but Uh you know, also- I forgot. Also, there's policy and pivot. Um, And just to quickly mention, you know, Catherine sort of started accidentally talking about policies. Like, you know, if have a policy of I will eat soft serve ice cream if I'm at the county fair this summer because it's my favorite thing, but I'm not going to have ice cream at home. Yeah, like randomly on a Tuesday, I'm not going to go to the drive through and grit it. You know, I will have I will only drink alcohol on my vacation on like two of the days and you pick those two days in advance or or, after dark, which is my big one. Oh, yeah. Don't start saving indulgences. Don't start day drinking. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's a big one on (laughs) But what Donald said, and I forgot because I don't even know if I put pivot. I didn't put pivot on this one. There are so many P's I forgot about. So many P's. Uh, But pivot, adjust, adapt. If something isn't working, if you're up on the scale, we always have the opportunity to change plans. The plan isn't the end goal. The end goal is taking responsibility for yourself. Yeah, and if commitments you- are for your your spouse or significant other, <laughs> but <laughs> but committing to one, like you know, being being uh, you know hooked on a particular aspect of a plan that isn't working for you in, in the long term doesn't work because yeah. it's not working for you. <laughs> well, but people get locked in like, oh no, this is proof that I'm not good enough. This is proof that I can't lose weight. Oh my gosh, I can't even eat watermelon the right way. Like what's happening? But if we see every opportunity as, okay, this isn't working. How can I pivot? How can I adjust? How can I adapt to this? Because last summer with we had plan, 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 and then COVID, which isn't a P word, but that's fine. But it derailed a lot of my summer yeah and being bitter about it like whoa it didn't even like that's why like the dog ate my homework whatever that's that's not helpful how can we adapt to any situation because the lifestyle is the goal not the exact plan being the thing so we have given you many p's and p's use one of them i regret saying that i was gonna say please and i said p's (laughs) and i P- give peas a, a chance. Oh, no. Yeah, boy, there we, we both went to it. the same place. Um, but it's not the end of the year. It's the beginning of now, everyone. And you have the opportunity. I have the opportunity to really focus on what we can control based on the season that we're in. If you're not where you want to be, that is okay. And we can be inspired by people like Donald. And the next section that we're going to cover on this episode. Um, But it's not the end. It's just the beginning. And uh, we believe in you. Just pick one. P. That's the final P. Pick pick one. Yeah. And and look, I I think that we just wanted to make sure that this episode was relatable to people who are sort of in all – phases and all seasons of their fitness journey right now. If you're somebody who is just trying, just struggling to do anything right now, you can use these P's to get yourself started. If you're somebody who is is doing okay or even doing great, you can still use these P's to <laughs> take your your plan up a level. And and if roadblocks and stumbling blocks come along you can you can follow this system so to speak and and get yourself back on track or you know keep yourself on the right track well I, as you're sitting there i imagined you being like from one of those 1950s like school videos that you would watch like well, gee, mister, I'm doing fine, and I, I don't need those peas. What do they have to do with me? Well, Jimmy, I'm glad you asked, because the peas are for everyone, any place, time, and people. I, so do, I do sound exactly we like We are that now kid. going to use the peas yeah. for you, Johnny American. And, oh, no, I, I, I know like why. it. Don't stop now. <laughs> so... Uh, so, <clears throat> okay, on to part two. Okay, so say say you're someone like Donald. Donald Weigel, Donald Summertime. He's lost 14 pounds this year. He's been kind of like, oh, who even knows? Congra- like, honestly, congratulations. I know I sound snarky right Thank now, you. but there Thank you go. You. But for uh, everybody, 
no matter where you are in the world, as long as it's the Northern Hemisphere, it's summer right now. Now we're going to go. <laughs> no matter where <laughs> are you are in the world, as long as it's in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. But maybe you're in uh, you're in winter. That's also fine, too. But in this part, we're going to talk a little bit more. And again, we're just going to repeat some things that we've already said. So if you're like, but you already said this, mister. Did you forget because you're old? I will say, no, Johnny. It was on purpose. We did it uh, The other P. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, we're going to celebrate another pea, which is the summer potato salad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the mayonnaise-based potato salad. Oh, my goodness. Um, anyway, so in this part, we are going to talk about people like Donald Weigel Jr. and maybe even you, listener, who have been doing pretty well this year. Maybe you're staying on track. Things have been going well. But, oh, no, now – you didn't even notice, and it's summertime, and the schedules have changed, and the days are longer, and the work schedule has changed, well, and the kids and, are and out of school. Well, as we mentioned, I have a lot of like days that are just filled with food and drink attunities coming up yeah. here in July, and so I need to employ all of these as a strategy ahead of time, during, and after to make sure that I don't, you know, gain the 14 pounds back that I lost this year in in a matter of one month. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so we are going to invite you again to use the letter P's in this portion as well, because they are adaptable in many situations. So first, again, we are going to pause and say hello and welcome. Welcome to summertime. Uh, if it is summertime where you are, or what is it, Teddy Bear Picnic Day? Yeah, yeah. Happy uh, Teddy Bear Picnic Day. Yeah, July tenth <laughs> is Teddy Bear's Picnic Day. <laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah, I guess the big Teddy Bear. No, I think it's, I think it's a kids' book. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I can okay. sing the song. Yeah, okay. um, but if it is, maybe it's summertime. Things have been going well. You're ready to level up, everybody. Maybe that whole starting with a five minute walk isn't your jam, and that's okay. Um, but we are going to pause. Ask you where you are right now. And again, what are you ready to do based on what the upcoming plans for the summer are? Yeah, and I think it's always good to pause and really take a look around so that you don't end up on cruise control and you don't allow your habits to slowly erode and that you're prepared for when these unusual circumstances come up that might throw you off of your routine. Right. So you might have barbecues or cookouts or backyard Vacations, road trips, yeah. uh, visitors might be coming, work, uh, kids' activities in the yeah, summer. Yeah, sum summer people are doing things, people are visiting, you're visiting people, and it can throw us off. Even when things are going well, vacations can be big stumbling blocks. We already did episodes uh, on managing vacation in particular, but sometimes staycations are, are tough and, and just a weekend barbecue, you want to get the most out of the season. But this is where the planning comes in, really looking at what is coming up ahead for you and really deciding what to prioritize. We can have it all, but not all at the same time. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe your thing is that you go to a gym all the time or that your activity is focused around you're in a some sort of basketball league or a volleyball league. <laughs> Catherine's laughing because I always mention basketball. And you know, maybe with with the upcoming season, you realize that you're not going to be able to participate in those things that you usually do. So maybe you you want to plan on adding like some hikes to your vacation or, you know, trying to, to add some activity to when you know, visitors are coming or, or, you know, even trying to figure out how to get in some activity on a road trip. Right, exactly. And there's like, I went uh, to visit family recently, and there was uh, a local Planet Fitness uh, right near where I was staying. Didn't get a chance to join. Uh, it wasn't the right time to do that. But joining, sometimes uh, gyms have weekly memberships that you can join and do that. Prioritizing a morning walk if you're on vacation is a good thing to do. But also if you're staying local, I know there are some people who are like, I can't wait until summer. It can't ever be hot enough for me. And then other people hate it. Adapt and pivot to the season. If you love running, but this is a terrible time to do it, what indoor activity could you do? If you love swimming, but the pools are overcrowded, maybe this is a time to focus on something else. Remember, if we're stubborn about things and just go like, well, I can't lose weight until blah, or this isn't running season, or my club is over, what am I going to do? 
pivot. Not everything has to be 365 days a year, including potato salad, which can also uh, throw us off. Yeah, or or maybe this is the time for you to add something that yeah. you're not already doing. Maybe you're you're you know really doing a lot of cardio, but you you are, have the ability to add some strength training. Like, hey, it's summer. Like, I've got actually extra time on my hands. Uh, said somebody somewhere. Yeah. So uh, sign up for a thing. I actually wrote thing because that's sign kind of, up for a thing. Sign up for a thing. Yeah. Sign up for a five k. Sign up for a uh, a class, a form class for uh, for strength training or for swimming. Um, I actually would like to really prioritize swimming this summer because it is warmer. Um, what can you pair back on? Also, what things maybe this is a time to pull away from some volunteer things and really kind of concentrate on being able to enjoy the season. So suddenly you don't wake up and it's already September. Yeah. And again, if you are going to those potlucks and cookouts and that kind of thing, make sure to prioritize foods that really matter. If we get loaded up on, you know, prepackaged snackos that don't really mean anything and then we regret it later, that's not really the way to go out. Prioritize the foods that are really special. I actually, when we were talking about the episode, I was like, if you're, if Aunt Grandma makes a whatever, like, make sure to eat that. I don't know what an Aunt Grandma is, but it's fine. Aunt Uh, Grandma. Aunt Grandma. Uh, uh, but if you're going somewhere, really prioritize the foods that really matter to you, not just the store-bought stuff that isn't all that interesting. And then you can also bring a watermelon and pop, pop up, up the, the volume. volume. Take watermelon. It's good for everything. Yeah, it, no matter where you are in your holy fitness journey. Yeah, um, hopefully you, you like watermelon. But, you know, there's there's always the old favorites of, you know, roasted peppers, mushrooms, onions. Like we're naming everyone's favorite All foods. the vegetables. Add volume to the things that you really enjoy eating uh, to just make them go farther and and it'll be more satisfying. Uh, Someone the other day was saying uh, in what place, we only look thin place, that they were eating uh, a decent number of calories, like 2,000 calories a day, but they were still really hungry. It is a big uh, tip and a, a big sign to me to pump up the volume to make sure that what you're eating is satisfying. And again, no matter where you are in your fitness journey, even if you're absolutely killing it, like look ahead and and try and pair and also set policies yeah. regardless of where you are. Um, try and save those treats for for a special occasion um, so that it doesn't suddenly, you know, snowball into, well, I'm eating, this is a summer food that I can only get right now, so I'm going to eat it over and over again. Um, set yourself a policy of I'm I'm only going to have it at this time or I'm only going to, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Aunt Grandma's you know, <laughs> uh, mayonnaise-based potato salad, but I'm only going to eat it when I'm at the family reunion. You know, I'm right. not, I'm not going to take a bunch home and then continue to eat it throughout the summer. Well, and I recently twice, which I only posted about once on Instagram, a neighbor gave us three feet of bread. Like, and I'm not exaggerating. No, with like the feet. there's there's a picture on Instagram. It is literally was three feet of non bread of bread, and it was she had she was moving. She gave it to us. It wasn't like it was fresh baked for me uh, with my initials in it, uh, but she gave it to us. I had one small serving. Donald doesn't prioritize bread. Our daughter isn't a really big fan, so I ended up taking a bite and then I put it in the trash uh, and. I received very uh, sort of a, a complex mix of how could you throw away food? There are starving people in the world. And for me, I prioritized the generosity of the treat and then I threw it away because I did not If eat. we had it in the house, we would have eaten it and damaged our health. Yeah, like, there's me no way in that particular. It, that it would have just, you know, sat there. It, and there, there's no like doling it out over a period of no. a few weeks in small portions. Like, no. It was three feet so of non-bread. If people are giving you gifts of giant amounts of food, please prioritize throwing them out and not feeling bad about it. The gesture was lovely. It was so kind of her to do that. But I have disordered eating patterns and it is not okay for me to have feet, like measured in feet of food in the house at my disposal. I was also back east and a neighbor gave my mom a giant, like feet again of this like gingerbread thing. And it was so delicious, but it came, it was like in the same kind of log shape, like 
house formation, I did not bring any back with me to California because it would not have made it through uh, California customs because I would have eaten it and it would be in my stomach. Exactly. And look, I I don't encourage throwing away of food, but keep in mind that that your health is a priority and you're not helping the world by you know, taking one for the team and eating thousands of calories of food that is you're going to feel shameful about later. If you really have to, I'm sure you can find ways to give it away. Yeah. But in a pinch, you can just get rid of it and know that you're doing the best thing for yourself. Well, and I, I actually do uh, prioritize or want to tell people that it's okay to throw food away because, again, it has served its purpose. And if it is going to take you three weeks to lose the weight you gain by eating it, it's not doing you any good. If it is stressful, if you have disordered eating patterns with it, just don't bother with it. I am getting off my soap box now, which I think is a form of neat, which is super duper. So Absolutely. I Get up and it. down your soapbox burns lots of calories. Right. But whichever pee you use, whether it's just pausing at any given moment when you're feeling overwhelmed to really consider the situation you're in, pivoting at any point by looking at your plan and saying, gosh, things have changed. How can I adapt to this? Prioritizing what you can control in the moment, what you can control, what feels important at the time matters, what you can pair, how you can work certain things into your plan in a purposeful way instead of slap dash. There, I said it. How can you pump up the volume, whether it is uh, hot or cold where you are? How can you add veggies and low calorie foods to your volume to make sure that you are satisfied? How can you adjust your portions in any way, whether you're tracking calories or just loosely trying to watch your portions? How can you take more responsibility there? And again, what policies can you put in place in your life about how you're going to get in activity, how you're going to prioritize movement and food and alcohol to really set yourself up for success? And then finally, again, going back to pivot. We always have an opportunity to pause and assess the situation and try something else just because the first six months of the year might not have gone the way you wanted them to. We can adjust and adapt and control what we can right in front of us. I do not know what the next six months are going to hold. I can't tell you that I'm going to lose the 10 pounds that I gained in the last year. What I can do is look right in front of me, look at the next six to eight weeks, and decide what I'm ready to do. For me, that might mean maintaining my weight over the next six weeks would be success. For Donald, it might mean something else. And understanding what you can do and what you can control right now, whether you're just starting back out at, at, at you know, your, your health goals again, or whether you're enjoying your summer with Donald hang 10 <laughs> off of a, yes. I don't know, you hang 10 off things, Donald? Clearly I hang 10 off of things. Yes. <laughs> whether you're hanging 10 off of a I don't know, a golf ball? I don't know. Do you hang down? No, a surfboard, surfboard, typically. Okay. <laughs> and, and if you know me, you know I'm a big, big surfer. Uh, and golfer, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And golfer. Also. No, I don't do either of those things. So really pay attention to what's right in front of you and know that we can still enjoy the season and enjoy time with friends and family, get in some movement, and feel good about the season ahead and not feel like we're victims. We cannot control the end results, but we can control so much given all of the peas that we have given you. Uh, even if potato salad ends up being a ninth or tenth one of the peas, it's fine. Can you think of any other P words? <laughs> no, not a one. Please continue to enjoy the season and yes, episode. Very, there very, we go. Very well done and very well uh, Sorry, wrapped up and summarized. I know. I look, I, took, I paused and took a breath. Yes, you sure did. Thank you so much, uh, dear. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, we are truly grateful for uh, all of you. Uh, no matter where you are in your fitness journey, it really means a lot to us that you have spent some time uh, taken some time out of your summer to listen to an episode of this show. Uh, and you can listen 
listen to all of our episodes wherever you found this one. We're on all the major uh, podcast platforms, and they're all available at any time on our website at weonlylookthin.com. Yep, and if you are at weonlylookthin.com, click on that link for Join Our Support Group to find out more about Walt Place, another P. Walt Place, We Only Look Thin Place is a Facebook-based accountability group for women. We are not a weight loss plan. We have people doing lots of different programs, but we are a place for support and accountability. We do Zoom meetings, check-ins daily in the morning and the evening. We have a group focused on uh, food choices, activity, weigh-ins, and it's just a really safe place to work on yourself while you are uh, around other people who are doing the same thing, who understand the struggles, setbacks, and successes that you're uh, you're looking at. We have two subscription options, a monthly option with a three-day complimentary trial and a three-month subscription with a seven-day complimentary trial to see if Wool Place is right for you. Yeah, so please check it out. It is a, a really great group, and uh, I'm very proud of it and the work that Catherine does there. And you can also uh, interact with us on social media. You can find us at We Only Look Thin on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or uh, you could send us an email. Uh, we have an episode coming up that was uh, that is inspired by a question from a listener, and uh, that is coming soon. Uh, we have done many episodes uh, based on listener questions. Uh, we are happy to answer your questions. Um, also, uh, if uh, you want to give us compliments, We'd love to hear from you, and we appreciate that. You can do that to weonlylookthin at gmail.com. Yep, and if you do have more compliments for us, could you head on over to Apple Podcast and leave us a rating and a review? Not only does it let us know that what we're doing is making a difference, but it also helps the algorithms uh, direct other people toward our podcast when they are looking for inspirational, maybe funny, good-looking podcast. Are podcasts good-looking? I uh, think so. Well, yeah, podcasters are good-looking. Yeah. We, are, we are proof of that. For sure. And uh, you can also tell others that we're good-looking. That would really help us out. Um, if you can uh, recommend the show, word of mouth is one of the best ways that really helps the show grow. We would be really grateful if you would tell somebody about it. If it comes up in conversation, if you're on uh, you know, Reddit or Discord or a Facebook group, and uh, it's appropriate. We would love a shout out. It is one of the best ways in which the show grows. Yep, it sure is. So whether you prefer to hang ten or <laughs> play the contrabass clarinet or the alphorn this summer, just remember that Catherine and I are an inspiration. Asian, Asian, Asian. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.